Hello friends, it's Kayla. I'm here today to give you fall recommendations. It's the first week of fall and I asked you on Instagram what type of books you needed recommendations for. I picked about 20, some more vague, some more specific, and I'm going to leave each of them in an individual comment down below. So if you have a recommendation for this specific thing, you can leave it on that comment and then we can build more and more recommendations in the comment section which would be very exciting a lot of the things that came in are things that i also love reading and this whole process made me realize that i don't read enough of that thing so i might actually take some of your recommendations on these specific things into a video series for next fall so i'm going to make this a pretty rapid fire recommendation video just because i don't do these enough some are books that I've talked about before, like all-time favorites. Some of them are things that I've read recently. Some are just books I feel like I haven't talked about enough. And there's also going to be a good amount of books that I didn't rate highly because they fit the prompt so well. And I think they have appeal, even if they didn't fit for my like overly specific taste. The first thing that was requested more than anything else is witch books. And I'm completely on board. We're on the same page. Since I have some new people here, maybe you haven't heard of these recommendations, uh, but these are my top two recommendations at this current moment in my life. Both were in my favorites video of last year. We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry and The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is more of a campy, silly witch story. It's about a team of field hockey players and it's set in the 80s. I also got asked a lot for like 80s 90s nostalgia that type of vibe obviously like any school related book I often just associate with the fall season but this is related to the Salem witch trials it has to do with all of these girls giving themselves over to the darkness to win um, just to win at field hockey. This is for a very specific reader um, but when it finds its right audience it just feels so good so I have to recommend it wholeheartedly. And then while this is written in a very unique format of like a first person plural, this is a very like classic story, um, a puritanical society, a girl who is learning about her own magic, starts out the book just following the rules and doing everything the right way, and then learns that her mother was involved in some witchcraft and there is this dark forest surrounding the town that nobody's allowed to go into but of course she goes in and I just thought it was flawless it's the first in a series so get into it now so when the next book comes out we can read it together this next ask is one of my favorites it came in a lot and it was like girl lost in the woods and I feel like it's a pretty vague concept and I realized that I don't really have that much to offer but I love the concept of a girl lost in the woods but sometimes it ends up being more like contemporary introspective which is fine or I end up reading it and it's more like flashbacks to when the girl was lost in the woods or it ends up being horror or paranormal I need more recommendations for just like a girl who's lost in the woods who's running from somebody and like trying to hide trying to escape like a slasher where you don't know how it's gonna end up because obviously if we're flashing back to like 20 years in the past which is my go-to trope you already kind of know that the girl got out of the woods but the ones that I do have I was thinking of the outliers by Kimberly McCrate because this is about a girl whose friend is missing in the woods and she texts her these like strange messages and she just has to go find her and find out where she is it gets really ridiculous and over the top but I remember having a lot of fun reading it even though I didn't rate it really highly and then Force of Nature by Jane Harper if you're looking for a more detective based one um, we're following this group of women who went on a hike together they all work together they're colleagues and five of them go into the woods and four of them come out and we're trying to figure out what happened whilst in the woods and then the river at night is one of my go-to recommendations just because i don't read enough thrillers that are just thrilling and not mystery so this is always my go-to recommendation for just a thriller you're not trying to find anything out there's no secret it's a group of women again on a river rafting expedition and then they end up like stranded in the woods and there are forces of nature and humans that are putting them in danger. Another one I saw is people interested in books, thrillers that revolve around riddles that I thought was cool and made me really have to think. My top recommendation for this is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by, who's this by? I don't know where the book is. Stuart something. Stuart Turton. So this one, there's a guy 
who every day like wakes up in a different body of somebody who was at this party where there was a death of this woman and he's solving the mystery while popping into different bodies so he has to like realize who he is it's like a game of clue there are all of these people who could be responsible and it's just up to him to figure out who done it i did get asked a lot also for just like a who done it mystery and while this has some fantastical obviously elements to it i think this is a fun one because you get to solve the mystery while you read and then the other one that i thought of was people like us by dana mele which is a ya mystery uh, this has to do with the death of a girl and then she left these like computer generated like secrets and codes and riddles that our main character has to solve it's like a scavenger hunt it's at a private school i know i also got asked for like academic books dark academia i don't think i have any new dark academia books to recommend my list is pretty much the same as it was last time i did a video like this actually though let's switch over to a couple academic books because one request i got was a morally gray character and i recently read for your own good by samantha downing you know my love of samantha downing i love all of her stuff but from what i've seen of picking this for my book club and seeing everyone's thoughts is this is the one that has the most mass appeal it's just super interesting being in the head of somebody who thinks that they're making the right decisions. I don't think he's morally gray in that you don't know if he's like doing the right thing, but he goes through his own journey of like drugging people at school because he decides that he's so smart and so brilliant and he wants all of his like fellow staff members and students to be at their best so he's willing to like mess with them manipulate them um drug them to make them like more awake or more energetic or more like easily manipulated and this is another just like over the top thriller that was so much fun that i recommend i'm really getting into more academic books from the teacher's perspective as opposed to the student's perspective recently so if you're on that journey with me my next recommendation is the one that i'm giving for um i got asked about like women who kill so they never learn by lane fargo is my like top recommended thriller of the entire year if you're going to make time for one mystery thriller this year i think it should be this one everybody loves it it's interesting it's twisty and it's about revenge so we're following a professor who every year basically decides that there's a man on campus that needs to get what he deserves but in her latest kill she gets a little bit messy and is perhaps going to be found out and then we're also following the perspective of a student at the same university and she is on her own path of revenge because something happened to her roommate if you want a book from a little bit different of a perspective a little bit different of a genre because this isn't like a true thriller mystery horror it's a bit quieter and you're from the outside perspective and that's my sister the serial killer by oyen can braithwaite where we're following um a woman who is the sister of a woman who is killing men and is about to kill the man that she herself is interested in it is kind of about how far you would go to protect somebody like i said i got asked for who done it stories and i also got asked um about like a whole cast of characters where one is dying one by one and i thought that this could be a good fit for that this is an unwanted guest by sherry lapina also i got asked a few times um for books about like murder but that didn't get super gory and this is just a fun like locked room mystery uh I also would recommend One by One by Ruth Ware. Both of these are set in the winter, not the fall, so the vibes don't feel perfect. But I feel like this is one I don't recommend enough. Um, one by One is about like colleagues who are stuck together in the snow. This one I think is more interesting though because the characters don't know each other going in and they all have different like motives for being at this chalet. A blizzard comes in, the electricity is off, and they start dropping like flies. This one came in a couple times phrased the exact same way so i couldn't ignore it and it was lesbian flannel cottage vibes don't ask me how multiple people were on the same page with that but i have a couple recommendations and i gave them both three stars and they're both ya but they're both paranormal perfectly embody this vibe and also all of the small town requests i got if you have anything that's adult for this whether it's realistic 
or paranormal, that's the type of recommendation that I need in my life. So definitely look for this comment down below. But I'm gonna recommend you The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold and Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. These both follow teenage girls in small towns with weird, spooky vibes, very atmospheric. And in each of them, they have a family member who is being suspected of a crime. This one's set in a place called Snakebite, Oregon. And this one has a girl named Shady Grove. And like, I feel like that's all you need to know. Like this is the vibes you're looking for. In a similar vein, one of the requests that came in was like real world with witchy vibes, similar to Summer of Cell by Katrina Leno, which is one of my favorite books. But I had a couple things immediately come to mind. So I wanted to recommend really any Anna Marie McLemore and then Aiden Thomas. Uh, Cemetery Boys and Blanca Roja are truly paranormal. Like the fantasy is a little more than the real world stuff, but we deal with a lot of the same things. So like there's this like weird vibe, a cast of queer characters, new love, uh, friendship, sibling vibes. So I think both of these would satisfy your desire for that. In this one, we have a boy who's becoming a bruja and he brings back a ghost that he shouldn't. There's some family legacy stuff in this one. Uh, there's a group of swans who's going to take one of the sisters to become a part of their, I don't know what a group of swans is called, just like their their family. Uh, big fall vibes, foresty magic in these. Next I got asked about short story collections and I don't know if I'm the right person to ask because I have loved almost every short story collection that's horror that I've read but if you're new to this type of thing I definitely have some places for you to start. Um, Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado is incredible and has like great commentary. Slasher Girls and Monster Boys is one of my favorites. Like how can you resist this cover? It's incredible. I really don't think you can go wrong with Stephen King. So everything's eventual and if it bleeds we're both solid, full of solid short stories for me. Toil and Trouble is probably the most seasonally perfect choice. 15 Tales of Women in Witchcraft. And then also Edgar Allan Poe, very much fall vibes. So his hideous heart is reimaginings of his original stories and his original stories are also in here, which is just perfect. Getting to another pretty specific one is um, books that feel like the autumn filter on TikTok. And I too am just dying, absolutely dying over this filter. So my recommendations for this have to be this because I feel like these colors are just perfectly on point and also this like maybe I'm thinking of this wrong because I'm just thinking of covers but like come on one request I also got a lot is a book that feels like crunchy leaves or walking through leaves and in my mind this is like a positive thing and I cannot think of any books that give me fall vibes that I've read and are like cozy soft like warm like i got asked for books like a warm hug so i'm gonna leave that in the comments in case you have any suggestions because i don't read a ton of lighthearted contemporary and the ones that i have just like don't feel seasonally right so please help people out with that because this got asked a lot uh, but these are ones that the cover and the tone really does match that filter and feels like walking on crisp fall leaves but not in like a good warm happy way. Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power is a really hard one to talk about because a lot of the things that I enjoy and the reasons that this is a great recommendation for people who read like me I can't talk about because they're like spoilers to the plot. But just know this has a ton of tropes and vibes that I've really really meshed with. I only gave it three stars but most people seem to love this so I would definitely recommend it. Obviously it's beautiful. All you need to know is it's about a girl who moves to her mom's um, original like small town. Her mom has been trying to keep her away. She realizes all of this family um, and family history that she didn't know she has and it gets real weird and ominous spooky. This could also fit for the lesbian flannel cottage vibe. But definitely no romance in here. So if that's something you like, then there you go. And then The House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt is something that again is like a hard one to find the audience for, but when I see people love it, it just makes me so happy because it's a very strange like fairy tale story. It is a girl lost in the woods, so this fits with a couple of different requests, but it's not like a typical story by any means. It's very strange. It's very cyclical. It's about a woman who is lost in the woods, or was she kidnapped, 
or did she run away? You don't really know. It takes place in colonial New England and it reads just like it looks. To stay on the atmosphere train, if we had books that feel like crisp leaves, also I want to talk about books that feel like a foggy morning. Like a town that's always foggy. So of course I had to pick books that are foggy on the cover. This one is a realistic mystery. This one is a fantasy horror. Still Mine by Amy Stewart is a book that I feel like I don't talk about enough because I didn't give it the highest rating, but my review of it was very positive and talking about how interesting and on the edge of my seat I felt while reading it. So it's about a woman who moves to a small town where it's always foggy. <laughs> the atmosphere I remember in here was very ominous and unsettling. She moves to this new town and there is a woman who is missing and she decides to try to figure out what happened to her and in that reveals a lot of things about her past and all of the different strange characters in the town were all keeping their own secrets. In The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher we also have a woman in a small town. One of my favorite requests that came in that came in a lot is a book that feels like Gilmore Girls and again I don't read books that feel like Gilmore Girls but I feel like I should so I'll leave that as a comment below too in case you want to help out but this feels like Gilmore Girls if Gilmore Girls went to Narnia and also was horror. <laughs> So we have an interesting cast of characters. There's like quirky little businesses and quirky, you know, shop owners. There's this place called the Glory to God Museum of Natural Wonders, Curiosities, and Taxidermy. And in that, our main character and her friend find a portal to this fantasy world. There are creatures who can sense your fear and you have to be very careful while you're there and it just gets very weird. I gave it five stars and I feel like I just like haven't promoted this enough since I read it. It's super fun, super over the top, and unsettling, and foggy. Another book I feel like I haven't talked about enough since I read it fits with the ones when I get asked for spooky haunted house stories. I often recommend the same ones because I haven't read a lot of them that have really worked for me, but one of them is The Good House by Tanana Reeve Dew. I absolutely have a goal to read more from this author because I don't hear her talked about enough and I really think her writing style would work for fans of Stephen King. We're following a woman named Angela, like current day, going about her life and also reflecting on her time in this house and her subsequent return to this house. Uh, her son has died there and there is like an evil presence lurking. It's very spooky. There's mythology. It's a family saga. It's very immersive. Um, and another one that I recommend all the time that's like a spooky house but it's realistic mystery thriller fiction. That was a weird sentence. Um, and that's The Missing Years by Lexi Elliott. I just don't think I've made enough of you pick this up. It's more small town vibes. It has to do with an inheritance of an old manor. This woman goes to the Scottish Highlands. There's a lot of like pub scenes with like the local like strange folks, a little romance, a little claustrophobic vibe because the house is just strange. She finds strange things sitting around. People and dogs won't come near the house. There's all these rumors around town. Her father is missing slash dead. It's just like very interesting, slow, good fall vibes. Next I got asked for some time travel stories and I completely agree that fall is for time travel. If we're talking about all of the science fiction themes and stories like clone stories you're supposed to read in spring, space stories are for winter, I don't know, superpower and alien stories are for summer, and time travel is for fall. Like tell me I'm wrong. Um, I have to recommend ones that I think take place in fall too, like 112263 by Stephen King. It's one of my favorite time travel books. Uh, it's about a man who is going back to this date to perhaps stop the murder of JFK. This is just a really fascinating book for me and I'm often not into more historical books. So the fact that it got me totally on board I think is impressive. And a book that I just still remain doesn't get enough hype is Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. I know a lot of people have read and loved it but I just don't think it's gotten enough love. Like this should just be the most talked about why a thriller? I don't know. It has all the right vibes, like a group of friends from school, some relationship drama, friendship drama, somebody's dead and like nobody is revealing what really happened. Uh, the kickoff is like during a thunderstorm when a mysterious man comes to the door and then these teens have to relive the same experience over and over until they solve this mystery. It's so fun. 
and so good for this season. Next up, I really want to recommend these two books and they fit for so many different things that were requested like insular settings, a small cast of characters, unsettling writing, and I feel like I haven't talked about them enough in my life. So Lakewood by Megan Giddings has to do with like this woman who is going through medical experimentation and has a lot of commentary on medical racism. She's living in this like small kind of town and um, they try to get more and more control of her and what she's allowed to do throughout the story. Very, very unsettling. And then A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay isn't something that I gave high ratings, but when I see this find its audience, I'm always so happy for people because I know everyone, everyone recommends this to me so often. And I'm like, yeah, I have totally read it. Paul Tremblay, been there. This is about like a teen's descent into madness. Uh, there's like an exorcism, there is conversations about demonic possession, and it also has like a TV show, a reality show being made about their life, which makes the stakes very high and interesting. Um, so if you like that type of story, I would highly recommend this. And it also has the like years and years in the future interviewing someone who knows what really happened back in the day and slowly things are revealed. It's very unsettling writing. And I just remembered another recommendation request that was about um, women and madness and like a play on the idea of a hysterical woman so this could be an interesting thing for that and then I would also recommend I'm not gonna go grab it because my battery lights flashing at me but a lesson in vengeance by Victoria Lee also fits for a lot of the requests that have already come in again I gave it three stars but if you love YA paranormal stories you're looking for dark academia uh, this perfectly fits that recommendation because uh, our main character is writing an essay about the idea of like how women were treated in the past regarding mental health and witchcraft and that type of thing and then she's also experiencing her own situation that plays off of that. Next up to get some more domestic thrillers in here, uh, I got asked about a book that has like really good plot twists that you can see coming or that like when they happen they feel very satisfying and I'm actually going to recommend another book that I didn't love but I really want this book to find its audience and it's Goodnight Beautiful by Amy Malloy. This is the book I talked about last year that the first half of this was a five star for me and that is directly regarding the twists and turns and reveals that happen. They're so good and they're so satisfying and they're very like aha moments they're like gotcha moments that you're like you know what you did and I really need to think about what this book has just done to me um it's about a married couple um the husband has like a basement um office he's a therapist and his sessions can be heard through the floor and that leads to a lot of you know secrets getting out and more small town fall vibes. I really recommend this even though I didn't love it. I know some people will be on the same page as me but I really want this to get in the right hands because I think Amy Malloy is an author that we should all be keeping our eye on. I want to see what she does in the future. I'm very fascinated at the choices that she made in here and the things that she could do to me in the future. And lastly I'm going to combine a bunch of recommendation requests that came in but there were things that said things about slow contemporary melancholy stories, um, literary fiction that makes you contemplate your life. And both of these are YA recommendations and they both have a little bit of weirdness but they just fit the vibe so well and I feel like these would be such good fall reads if you have been waiting for yourself to read them. Dig by A.S. King, like these are not going to be surprising recommendations so this is a great way to end it because these are just like quintessential me books. Uh, and then Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. In this one there are generations of wealth that we're talking through um, and we have like five cousins, I think it's five, who are the main characters and they all have very like different and strange narration styles. This is one of those books that you just need to trust me and go into. Even if A.S. King like hasn't been your vibe or this type of writing isn't your thing. If you like books that have interesting commentary and even if you typically read adult books like these are just so beautifully done. Uh, I can't really talk more about the plot. And then this one we're following a girl who's moving to a new place. She's had a very difficult past and she's reflecting on a lot of that while living and working on this farm taking care of um, 
kids like teaching them and there's also ghosts like ghosts of your past big metaphor in here um, but like everyone can see these ghosts and they just like follow you around and set by the sea and it also gives a lot of the like cottage flannel foggy small town things so that's it for my recommendations today i hope you took something away and you read something that i mentioned or and you go down in the comments and you leave your recommendations i think that would be so fantastic to see or if you want to use the comments as your own place to ask for recommendations maybe there can be more and more threads about other fall specific stories tropes and themes that you're looking for and then me and maybe other people can go down and recommend more things and it can be this whole great recommendation hub because i know not everyone has tens of thousands of people who are willing to help and find like the perfect book for them so you can utilize my comment section and i will try my best to help you out with anything else that you're looking for thank you so much for watching happy first week of fall i hope it's magical for you and i will see you later bye